name is Candace Teague and I'm from the Galveston Art Center. Today I'm going to show you how to make these frameable all occasion paper quilling cards. Once they've been given as a gift, they can fit in any 5x7 mat or frame. To make these you'll need quilling paper, glue, and you will need some toothpicks. To measure out the card you'll need a ruler, a pencil, scissors, and some watercolor paper. To make a simple swirl, all you have to do is put the toothpick towards the end but not all the way at the end, and then you just wrap it around the toothpick and then you start rolling down. You can choose to use the toothpick all the way down or you could take it out and just roll it with your fingers. Once you've rolled it down to the bottom, you can choose to let it loose like this or you can tighten it. This all depends on how big you want your swirl to be. If you want it to be larger, then you let it loose and if you want it to be smaller then you would tighten it. Once you found the perfect size for your swirl then you just glue it down and you hold it for a little bit so it stays. If you added too much glue like I did here all you have to do is use a toothpick to scrape away at the excess. For this craft we will also be making what I call a zigzag. I know there are probably real names uh, for these but that's what I call them. You basically fold back and forth on each side. For the card, we're using watercolor paper because it's a lot thicker. Using a ruler and the pencil, you want to measure out 6.5 inches by 10 inches, and then you want to go ahead and cut that out. Once you cut out your card, then you can go ahead and fold it. To create a nice sharp edge, I usually like to use a pencil, ruler, or the back of the scissors. The first one that we'll be making is this succulent card. I usually like to start off with making the leaves, and to do this, you want to roll it down like you're making a swirl but don't go all the way down to the bottom. Take the extra bit and bring it down to the bottom of the swirl. Once you've found the perfect size for your leaf, then you can go ahead and fold the top. And then you want to glue that end down. I usually like to glue mine right at the bottom of the swirl, but you can glue it wherever you wish. Hold the paper down a little bit so it stays. And then once it's completed, it should look something like this. Repeat the process a few more times and then you should have three succulent leaves. Then what I like to do is add a lot of glue to the leaf itself and to the watercolor paper, and I use a toothpick to spread it out evenly. Once you've glued them on, you want to add a little bit of pressure. Sometimes the coils or the swirls like to pop up, so I like to keep pressing them down as they're drying. There are two ways of making the pot. You can either glue the paper right onto the card itself, or you can make it separately and then glue those pieces down. For this card, I'm gluing the paper right onto the card itself. For the top of the pot, you want to measure out two pieces that are the exact same size, and then you want to glue the first piece right under the succulent leaves. Then you want to create two connecting pieces to hold the two longer pieces together. To make the connecting pieces, all you have to do is measure how wide you want it or how long you want the sides to be, and then you fold down a little part of it, and that is how I like to connect the pieces together. You can also fold a tiny piece like this and connect them that way if that's easier. What I like to do is glue the top of the pot and then wait for it to dry. You might have to keep messing with them just so they stay straight or where you want them to be. While I waited for the top of the pot to dry, I went ahead and made swirls for the leaves themselves. I chose a lighter green just to add some interest. Once the top of the pot is dry, you can go ahead and create the bottom of the pot. Cut out two pieces that are the exact same size and glue them right under the top of the pot. You can glue them straight away, but what I did was I created swirls to prop them up so they didn't fall inwards. I like to vary the sizes of the swirls. When creating your pots, you can either keep them straight up and down or you can taper them inwards. I mean, you could do a circular one if you wanted to. This is your creation, so it can be whatever you want it to be. As you can see in the video, I am doing the connecting side piece that I showed you how to do earlier. And I am creating a few more swirls so my pot doesn't cave in. So my camera shut off, but you didn't miss much. I measured a piece for the bottom of the pot and I glued it in between the swirls and the sides of the pot. Then I measured and cut two pieces for the middle of the pot where it will hold the pot's decoration. Once the majority of the swirls were glued in, I started on the decoration of the pot. When you create the first fold on the zigzag, you want to make sure that it fits in that little slot area. 
You want it to fit perfectly in there. Keep folding back and forth until you get the zigzag that you want. When I glue the zigzag in, I like to add a little bit of glue to the sides of the pot and in the slot area, and then I use a toothpick to move things around. Once the pot is completed, you can keep it like this, but I want to take it one step further by adding flowers. To do this, cut two equal pieces of quilling paper and place them in between the succulent leaves. To create the flowers, you use the same technique for the succulent leaves, but much smaller. Glue three of the flowers onto the top of the quilling paper. And the flowers are completed! So as you can see, I forgot a part of the pot. I forgot to add one of the little squigglies in between the top of the pot. I don't know why, I sometimes do things out of order. It just happens that way. I'm oh, sorry if you hear a little clacking. My dog is running around in there and she's crying. It's so sad. <laughs> but yeah, you could probably hear her. I let her in, so now you can probably hear her breathing. <laughs> Now that things have settled down a little bit, we're going to start on the next card. I decided to go with a blue pot for the string of pearls. I started this one by creating the pot first. Using the same technique as earlier, I just glued the pieces together first before gluing them onto the paper itself. I glued the two longest sides to one side first and I let that dry and then I glued the other side on. Once those pieces were dried, then I added the little squiggly. As you can see for the bottom pot, I just folded down a little piece at the top to glue that onto the top part of the pot. And then I measured out a piece for the bottom of the pot and then I glued that onto the bottom. <laughs> I hope I'm explaining everything correctly. I basically just glued the bottom on like this. I'm gonna fast forward the parts where I add the swirls just because you've seen that already. Once you've glued down your pot, it's time to add the leaves. I made all the tiny petals in advance and it was actually quite fun and relaxing. It can get tedious, but overall it's definitely worth it. As I glued them, I actually watched Kitchen Nightmares. So to create the string itself, I glued it to the top of the pot and then I glued down some of the petals to kind of train it to where I wanted to go. Once you glue down the petals, you have to wait for it, them to dry, of course, before you add the string to it. Here I'm just piling up the swirls on the top to give it some volume. Then I glued some of the swirls to the string itself. I also added a string in front of the pot just to give it more of a 3D look. I actually wrapped it around one of the pearls at the top and then I waited for that to dry and then like the others I trained it onto the pot by gluing some of the pearls on the pot itself. I'm really hoping that I'm explaining this correctly. I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you so much for making these cards with me. I think these are awesome gifts to give to people just because it's a card that they can keep. Or you can keep it for yourself. I hope you had fun and I'll see you later. Bye!